I got this question via email. Hey Paul, I like Bower Power episode 19 where you show how to hack Windows admin passwords from a Bower Puntu live DVD. Is there an easy way to hack into a Windows computer remotely over a network? Thanks, Michael. I think we can accommodate you, Michael. <laughs> This episode of Tech Shop is brought to you by Total Tech Resource Corporation. TTR offers IT solutions, hosted infrastructure, and solutions development. Visit TotalTechResource.com. TTR, we are IT. Welcome to episode 8 of Tech Shop. I, of course, am Paul Bauer, aka Twitter.com slash Pablo. Today we're going to look at ways to remotely hack into a Windows machine via remote desktop, or RDP. Michael isn't the only person who's asked me that question. Since I first shot episode 19 of the old Bauer Power podcast, that video has been seen roughly 85,000 times across the internet. Not a huge amount, but still, that's about 84,999 more than I expected. Anyway, a lot of people have come back asking if there's a way to get into a Windows machine remotely over a network. There are quite a few methods out there, but the one I'm going to show in this episode I think is probably the easiest. Plus, if you pull this off, you'll have full remote desktop access to the victim's computer. And remote desktop is the next best thing to actually being there. For you IT noobs, remote desktop is the full GUI remote console access for Windows developed by Microsoft. It's sort of what SSH is to Linux servers, except you can see everything on the desktop as if the computer is right in front of you. Now I'm not going to lie to you, if you have physical access to a machine like in the scenario from Bauer Power episode 19, that is infinitely more easier to gain administrator access. Remotely, there are many different ways of doing it, but the primary method used to gain access to a system remotely is to use guessing attacks. And the two main methods of guessing attacks are brute force and dictionary attacks. Brute forcing takes a really long time because it requires the attacker to try every possible combination to gain access. If a victim's password is long and is mixed with letters, numbers, uppercase and special characters, this is almost impossible. With a dictionary attack, the attacker uses a word list with a bunch of predetermined passwords. Now this method is faster, but you have to have a wide selection of passwords in your dictionary for it to be effective. You can find a ton of password dictionary lists and tools for download over at darknet.org.uk. Plus, there are some old school ways of improving your dictionary file using some low-tech reconnaissance techniques like social engineering, shoulder surfing, and good old dumpster diving. Passwords are only half the battle too, right? I mean, what user are you going to hack? Sure, you can go with a default administrator account, but if it's an Active Directory domain computer you're after, you may want to try your attack on a domain user account. An easy way of getting domain usernames is by doing some simple Google searching. Let's say you want to hack the manager of HR's computer for, oh, I don't know, soup plantation. You can probably Google around and find an email address for the manager of HR. And nine times out of ten, their email address is going to be their AD username. Now, all that being said, most of the time, if you're going to be using a password guessing attack, it's because you don't know what the hell or who the hell you're hacking. That's why you're guessing. All right, moving right along. Let's say you have your user list and your password list. Also say that you parked your car outside of an office building who has wireless secured with web and you just cracked the web key using the technique from Bauer Power episode 21. Now you're on the network and ready to scan it looking for a server to hack into. The tools I'll be using in this episode are Nmap and the relatively new Ncrack tool. For the network scan, we can use Nmap to scan an entire subnet for live hosts and for open ports. Once we have a list of machines listening on port 3389, we're ready to begin. Both Nmap and Ncrack are pre-installed in Backtrack 5, which is easily the number one hacking distro ever. Nmap is also pre-installed in Bower Puntu Linux, and Ncrack is super easy to install and will be available in Bower Puntu 11.10. If you prefer Ubuntu, it's even easier to install it yourself in Ubuntu because I have pre-compiled it to a dev file which you can download right here. To run the attack against the server, just run ncrack against your target server using your list of passwords and usernames. After going through the list, if successful, ncrack will display which username and password combo was successful. Boom. Done. Of course, this type of attack can be easily thwarted using a couple of techniques. 
One, make sure you're using strong passwords and enforce a complex password policy at your company using Active Directory group policies. Two, ensure that you configure password lockout group policies as well. This will protect against password guessing attacks because the target account will be locked out for a set period of time. These group policies are not enabled by default, so if you haven't implemented group policies already, do it now. If you're an administrator that doesn't implement strong password policies and lockout policies because they're more trouble than they're worth, then you should effing die. That's all I got for you this time. I hope you learned something from this episode, and what you learned, you use for good. Don't go trying to hack the Gibson at your local bank and tell the authorities you learned it on Tech Chop. I assume no responsibility for your stupid decisions. Make sure to subscribe and follow me on Twitter here and on Facebook here. Also, if you want to see something on the show or if you have questions, hit me up in the comments or send me an email at info at techchop.com. Come back next time for your prescribed dose of Tech Chop. Because I have pre-compiled, pre-compiled, pre-compiled it. Can a brother get some subscribers up in here?